Parola Semin. Hello everyone, Erica here, welcome to Valheim and something I'm calling Average Architecture Academy. Uh, it's going to be a real-time build-along series. We're going to do some really, really basic builds to get you started with building in Valheim. If you're new to the game or you've struggled with building in the past, hopefully you can find some good tips here. Today we're starting with a very early game base. It's going to be really simple. Uh, there's going to be just materials from the meadows and no spoilers here. So all we're going to do is build a very very simple little shack to put down a bed for the night and a fire and all that stuff. It's only going to cost us less than 100 wood hopefully if I've got my maths right. So I'm going to grab that now. I've got some stacks here. Each of these stacks is 50 wood. And to break them down, I just equip my hammer. And I'm just using the repair function in the build menu, which on mouse you can bring up by right clicking. It just makes it a little bit easier to see. And if I use mouse 3, which is clicking your mouse wheel, I can destroy the stack and get all of the materials back. So that's one really nice thing about building in Valheim is that um, materials do not uh, degenerate when you build something and destroy it again. You get everything back. My first tip of the day is if you find an abandoned building or even better yet one of these little abandoned farms you can have a very quick shelter just by fixing this up by putting down the equip our hammer bring up the build menu put down a crafting bench now we can repair everything we can also bring up the build menu and see we have other build pieces to use that require the crafting bench and if we put the hammer away we can interact with the workbench because it is under a roof and has sufficient shelter from the elements. So that's really handy to do and provide a nice shelter for day one. The other useful thing about finding these structures is that you can dismantle them again by putting down a workbench and removing the pieces and you have not only free wood but a lovely flat spot to build on. At the workbench you can also make a hoe. A hoe will let you level ground, but if you again right click to bring up the menu, you have the option to raise ground using stone and a workbench, and the option to parthen. The so parthen will remove things like grass, but it will not manipulate the terrain. It will still follow the contours of the land. If instead I choose to level ground, You'll see this little circle and it levels the ground I'm selecting with the ground I'm standing on or will do its best to. It has limits. Okay, if you see here the little line coming up it's going to try and raise the ground to that level. If I click once that is the maximum height it's going to go to. That's actually done quite a bit which is good. But not all ground can be raised that much, which is where the raised ground feature itself comes in. We're not going to bother with that today. Find yourself a relatively flat spot, flatten it some more if you need to, and then everything else should be with the build hammer. So this is a very, very simple little base, as I have said. And the first thing we need to do is put down a workbench. You'll see that all of these pieces are greyed out even though I have sufficient wood and that's purely because if you look down the bottom you'll see flashing workbench none. So we put the workbench down first. Workbench is used to craft some items uh, as well as repair items that have been made at a workbench. We can't use it without a roof and sufficient shelter. So we could put it in the building there, but if you don't have another building nearby, an easy way to do it is to put one wall on the side. I'm using these two by two wood walls here, the big square. Put two more along the back, 
find another on the other side, rotating with the mouse wheel. Take care of the Grayling. And then put on a thatch roof O corner 45 degree. Just rotate that until it wants to snap into place at the corner. And then rotate it the other way so that the beams cross at the top. And you can theoretically interact with the workstation. If it tells you it's too exposed, try putting another wall in and you should be fine. Here I can repair my tool. Sometimes the wind direction changes and it means that your station will be exposed, but more often than not, just the two sides and the back wall is sufficient. There are plenty of other ways to do this. This is just a really simple one uh, that doesn't require any finagling. Right, to build the house. Very, very simple. Figure out where you want the front door to be. This will be on the shorter side of the house. I'm going to put mine here. So I'll put a wood wall one by one, so not the big pieces. I'm going to do four of those in a row and then break out the middle two. This is where my door is going. I'm going to switch to the bigger wood walls and then turn it so that it's at right angles. And I want to go one on each side. Back to the little walls. One in between. Then again, finish it off so that it's identical on both these sides. Just like that. So on the far ends, we've got the one by one wood walls, the two wall gap in the middle, or a two meter. That's what the one refers to. So these are one meter by one meter walls. These bigger ones are two meters by two meters. So I want this to be four meters across in total. And the long side will be five. Pretty small. On the back end, so the end that I don't want the wall to be on, I'm going to go outwards, the one by one wall, at right angles. And then I'm going to turn that in one. One click of the mouse wheel. I'm going to do the same on the other side. One, rotate, in, then I'm going to rotate it twice, three times finish up the end. You could leave it like this. This is going to be our fire pit chimney, but you could also just snap one onto the other side as well. It's only going to cost you one extra wood. And there we have the basic shape of our house. It's going to be the front door straight through to the fireplace and a chimney out the back. So I want to raise these walls up to the same level. One. Here front and back and at the chimney here we're out of wood we'll pick up the next 50 go one two i find it easier to go from either side Snapping points at the end can be a little bit wonky. Side note, if you don't want something to snap, hold shift. And that toggles the snapping. Remember to hit tab to go into your inventory and eat as you're building, because you never know what might happen. Right, now we need to put a roof on. You could just go again with the 45 degree roof corners on the ends here. And that would be sufficient, but the clearance, if we put this here, clearance is a little bit tight for me. It makes me feel a little claustrophobic. So what I'm going to do is get a wood pole one meter and put it in every corner. Just like this. And then I'm going to grab the two meter wooden beams and frame this out just like this actually forget these ones here 
forget those ones we've got a trick to pull we're going to go back to the one meter beams and we're going to come out one at the front and then turn it and go out one at the side so this will give us a roof overhang is going to be especially important at the back so do that on all four sides go out one to the back and then go to the side out one to the front and then to the side and then join them up with the two meter beams You'll notice that some of these pieces, when I highlight them, are blue, some are green, and some go all the way to red. This refers to the stability of the building piece, or how many pieces it is away from being directly connected to the ground. So blue means it's touching ground or a foundational piece. Green means it's the next in line. And red means that anything I put here that doesn't connect back around to the loop or towards the ground going to break red call me a liar now only go so many pieces come on do the thing there we go but that's the maximum different building materials will give you different structural integrity so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Right, we have our roof frame up. We're going to go put a ladder in the middle and we're going to use the thatch roof 45 degree pieces. Turn them so they go up towards the middle from back end. One, two, three. And then on the other side, one, going to repair our hammer at the workbench and then we're going to dismantle this workbench station because we need the wood we want to keep this under 100 wood if possible we're going to move the workbench inside so we put the workbench back down here anywhere is fine we can always adjust later and then we want to complete the roof on this side. One, two. Don't worry about the front at the moment. We can get to that later if we need to. But we do want to take these beams out. This one, this one, and this one. Because the roof pieces will connect to the side beams that we have here. They don't need edge beams. They can look a little bit tidier. But right now we're focusing on maximizing how much we can get out of the wood that we've already gathered. And we still need to finish the roof up here. So for this, grab the thatch roof ridge 45 degree. And you can see it can be a bit of a pain in the backside to get to snap, but if you get the right angle. It will all fall into place. And then you can just aim at the one you've already got. And finish off the roof like that. Now you could bring the roof out a little bit extra. There are no one meter by two meter roof pieces unfortunately but you can snap it to that one meter beam and just have a little overlap like that if you wish. I'm going to do that here but it's not necessary. You could take this front one meter piece out if you wanted. That's not a problem at all. Then we've got to get it to snap with this piece, which will mean another ladder that we fall off. Because, let's be honest, ladders in Valheim are a little bit janky. And we'll just try and aim here like that. We've got a nice roof overhang on every side and we can reclaim this piece. And around the other side as well. And the ladder. 
and this letter inside. And we have 14 whole pieces of wood left, which is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. So we've got to put in a door. We're going to use the four wood little door here. And you'll notice that it has three possible snapping points. We're just going to use the middle. Doesn't matter which side it opens on, you can do whatever you like there. We're going to break down the workbench and replace it now that we're inside and just try and see that without even holding shift I can, let me zoom out a little bit, and phase it into the wall to a certain degree. I'm going to put it just so these back stocks phase into the wall and so that it's just phased through on the side. Basically I want the corner to match up with the door. I go outside I should be able to see that it hasn't come all the way through the wall. Very nice. And we still have 10 wood which is perfect because we need to put down a bed. That's under furniture. I'm going to do much the same thing. Just phase it through a little bit. Not a whole lot because then it can count as being outside. Just enough that you're not stubbing your toe every time you walk in. And I need to pick up some more stone. Now that we have five stone and two wood, we can put our fire in the chimney here. Okay, and you'll see up the top right by the map, we have a resting comfort of four. We have the shelter bonus and we have a fire. This is everything you need to be able to sleep through the night in Valheim. Is it pretty? No, not really. Is it functional? Yes, it's functional. This should be enough of a chimney that the smoke gets out, but the rain doesn't get in and put the fire out. The overhang should do its job. And it's easy enough to make prettier if you so desire. So what we're going to do is grab another 50 wood for the bonus section. What I want to do... Jump up on the workbench and use that as a ladder. First of all, I'm going to block off this end where the fire is. I'm going to use the wood wall 45 degree pieces. Zoom in so I can see where I'm aiming. And I want to put it on these cross beams here. Just like that. I'm going to put one down and use the other one to aim at. And there's still a gap there, but you're sheltered. So it doesn't hugely matter at this stage of the game. I'll do the other thing. The same thing on the other side. Right. I'm going to put a cooking station or two over the fire. Why not? Cook some food. Lovely. I, I think a floor would be nice. So let's go and put down just the 2x2 two two floor piece. One. Actually. We've got an odd numbered four, so we'll do the one by one piece up the front here. And then the two by twos after that. Oh, better get our food before that burns. We can just probably have to move things. No, there we go. What's that? That one's not snapped. All into place. Didn't even have to move anything. And we still have 26 wood. So let's do a little bit of trim in here. Let's cap this off. Make the edges look all nice. One, two that a bit of that very nice then i'm going to put oh i've got a seagull flying through that was a bit rude wasn't it go one two three 
three pieces there. Build ourselves a couple of windows. But four pieces left. We can do one wall right now. So I want to grab the wood roof cross 26 degree. And they can be a bit fiddly to snap, but if I aim it at the middle of this bottom beam, it will snap into place where I want it. Here we go. Grab our final 50 wood. The same thing on the other side. Aim at the middle. Aim at the middle. I don't want any smoke coming in here, so I'm going to... Put a wall across there and trim it in. I can still access the fire. I'm going to trim the fire in there too as well, just make it look a little bit neater. And we could put walls up the side here just to block it in a bit more. If I do that, I'm going to take out the little beams here. I'm going to add one meter wood poles to this, this. You do the same here, but I think I will rotate them twice so they have a little bit of extra dimension. A bit nicer. Do however you please. Very good. We still got 32 wood. I want to trim this up a little bit. I'll grab the 46 degree wood roof cross, pop it up top, and grab a 45 degree wood beam from that there. That there. Do the same over on this end. Wood roof cross, 45 degree beam. Just like that. And that's not too, too shabby. It's already looking much nicer than it was before. I want to also bring these poles down to the ground just to finish off the corners of the house. Nice and simple. Here we go. Pretty easy stuff there, really. Not too bad. We've even got room and wood left over, but down a couple of chests, or at least one. Two wood to spare for the fire. There we go, now we can stash all these raspberries I found, and the meat. Very nice. There's also room here to put in crafting item. The upgrades for the workbench so I could put a chopping block here. The tanning rack is a little trickier. It's quite large but you can put it up on a floor. You put a one by one meter floor here. Even something like that here. And put another chest on top. And you can also put the crafting upgrades outside as well. So I could have a tanning rack out here and the chopping block inside. I could have the chopping block by the door. Anything you feel like there, really. But this has been just a basic instruction to get you a little cozy cabin for the night. You want to start experimenting but don't really know where to start and want something that is going to serve you well while you figure out what you'd like to do with building a Valheim because there are so many possibilities and I'm going to leave a bunch of links down below to some really amazing building channels uh, who do pretty things instead of functional things. I try to do pretty things every now and again but really as long as I've got a fire and a roof over my head I can't complain. Well that's it from me today. I hope this has been helpful if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to reply. If you're new to Valheim, welcome. I hope you have fun. Uh, there's an amazing community out there that will be really happy to help you with anything you like. Um, yes. Until next episode of Average Architecture Academy in Valheim. 
I hope you stay well. Aquí te.